Hey guys, welcome back to Horror Mechanics. Today we're super excited to uh, show you guys what we got. We're getting ourselves into another project now. Uh, we found a BMW ZHP, right? Okay. Co uh, we got a Copart insurance auction. That's the Beamer right there, guys. Stay with us. We'll show you what it is now. And uh, of course, he didn't have a key. And we, we went to Jackie Cooper in Oklahoma City, BMW dealership. And all they needed is to prove them uh, ownership of the vehicle, that it's ours. And we ordered the key and it took less than a day. They shipped it to us with FedEx. Okay, you have to sign for it, of course. Just for one day, guys. Well, it costs like 202 bucks. But if you don't need it shipped, it's only like 170 something. So uh, now it's the moment of the tour to see how we're going to program that thing to work and see uh, see what the car is. We don't know if it runs and drives, the top is down. You see, just stay with us guys. It's a big day today. We're super excited. It's a ZHP. I don't know um, how familiar you are, but it's kind of like the special M package for the 330Ci. It's of course not a M engine, but a little bit more horsepower than a regular E46 330. I think it's about 235 horsepower. It has wider rear wheels, as you can see, and it will need a good bath because as you can see, this one is pretty dirty now. Okay, you can see it has the logo, M logo, almost everywhere. We needed some parts for the suspension. So uh, once we get it to the shop, guys, we're gonna, okay, let me throw that thing around, make a video and show you what we're gonna buy, how much we're gonna run into. And uh, we're going to uh, have the build on wheel well, okay, so you can check it out guys how much we spent every single detail and that will be the new autocross uh, vehicle as well. We'll still have the Scion and we still have the Fiesta. You can see it has the uh, ZHP bumpers, it's a real ZHP, sometimes you have to be careful if you buy ZHP because uh, some of them are wannabe, you know, they make them to look like a ZHP, but nothing like a ZHP. Okay guys, that's the car <laughs> right here now. Okay, you can see where they had the plastic. It uh, scratched the paint a little bit, so definitely we need to buff that thing pretty good. Uh, everything looks good up to the door. Fender is definitely bent, I don't know. Uh, we haven't decided where to fix it or to uh, rebuild that one okay and that's the interior we actually moved the seat to get to the trunk see if the key is there but of course it wasn't there so we had to purchase one and now we're gonna find out how we can program that thing stay with us guys okay guys and that's the procedure here for the key so we're gonna see what we can do we have the little helper there the pomeranian and the bulldog is sniffing the beamer Ike. Ike. yeah Right there. So we need to get in now. Okay, and we will need to close the doors. Definitely need to scoot the seat to the back. You know the ZHP actually has a red line of 6800 RPMs. That's one of the differences as well. All right, guys. So we get the key now. Put it in the ignition. Go to second position. Then we're gonna turn it off. We're gonna pull the key out. Hold this button and pump this one three times. Okay, see if it worked. And in our case it didn't, because probably the battery is weak. So now we have to restart the battery. Recharge it and, yep, it's dead. So we're gonna get the charger and go back to it in a little bit. Okay guys, we got our Noco GB40 here. <laughs> we see if we can start it now. Uh, and I think the top needs to be up so we can program the key. We'll check. Okay, let's see. Hopefully that thing starts. Okay, let's see now. Fired right up. Wow. That's good. It needs coolant. So we might have a leak in the radiator. Well, let's see if we can close the top now. So 
So unfortunately guys, we cannot even close the hard top, I mean the soft top convertible now because what is happening right here, you can see where the roll bars are, it's going all the way here and it cannot close because it's in the way. I even seen some of them go through the through the top if the top is up so we got lucky for that part but uh, we need to figure out a way to take the roll bars now so we can close it because I don't want to store it like that for another week until we get the parts and start working on it. Alright guys we got some too so let's uh, check it out now. We added a little bit of coolant and there is no leaks it was just uh, it took like less than a pint. Okay and it's time to take the roll bars off uh, see if we can put the top up okay I think guys that's the roll over sensor there that we need to remove and uh, we got the roll bar loose already six bolts on it we'll see how that thing is gonna come out now we probably need to disconnect the wires first and make sure that there is nothing underneath the wires it's always fun working on new stuff. And there is a hidden ball there under the wires. Okay, got this one out probably. Okay, that's that's the sensor guys, three bolts only. A little bit complicated, but yeah, let's see now. We need to get this side the same way. We have six bolts that we will need to be removing there. Okay, one bolt is out there. Five more to go. You can see it even has the M steering wheel badge on it right there. So that's that's pretty good. It'll be a fun fun car to drive, but there is some pop. Stay with us, we're gonna show you what the messed up thing we did now. Okay, we have the helpers there again. That crazy thing. It's called a Pomeranian. I don't know where they get their energy from, but I wish I had that energy to be honest with you. Okay, just two more and we'll be done with it. Okay, we need to disconnect the wire here now. Good thing it's not melted. Let me lift this thing up now and see if we can pick those up in the air now. Okay. Just like that. Just four more bolts and as you can see we got one of them out guys so we can replace the rollover bars. Okay, they made it pretty simple. And I actually like that a lot for being convertible. Okay, we'll get some negative feedback. That it's heavy, you know, but you get so much visibility at uh, autocross and stuff and track it and you can have the custom roll bar inside so we will be pretty safe and still have the visibility I mean I like to enjoy it you know it's not all about the racing it's about the daily driver being a nice daily driver too okay and we got it out there alright guys we put it together now okay let's Get some power and see if we can start it and put the top up now. Hopefully. Okay, so that works, that's awesome. Alright guys, check this thing out. We tried to put it in drive and it just moves everywhere. So we popped that thing. What happened? The shifter is broken. So whenever they crashed it, I guess the guy had the hand on the shifter and uh, pretty much broke the, the metal piece. You can see that was quite a bit of a crash, but uh, we'll need to replace it. Otherwise we have to shift it now by hand which uh, we can just to move it around here 
Okay, let's roll the windows up now. All the windows up. Maybe start the car and see if we can program the key now, if it's going to work or not. All the windows work, so this is good. Okay, now let's give it a try. If not, we'll have to use our program and see if it's going to do it. No, still didn't do it guys, we have to use our programming device to do the key because the unlocking and locking button don't work. It starts the car fine, but uh, we have a low voltage too, so that could be that could be a problem as well. Okay guys, we'll have more on the Beamer soon, stay tuned and see you next time.